to another garden vlog here on my channel. My name is Sarah and this is Sarah SoCal Garden. So in this week's vlog, I do have things that need to be planted into the ground. I have lots more seed sowing to do. I need to organize myself so I can do that. I'm planting strawberries down in this area, in this bed. I actually collected rainwater overnight because it rained overnight so I got a big bucket full that I need to transfer over to the rain barrel. Yeah, too hot. I need to plant out this strawberry planter with the strawberry plants that I got. And I got two different types of variety um, varieties of strawberries called the Indigo Sun. This is a honey melon um, sage. So this is part of the salvia family and this is an herb and it smells oh, it smells so good. Tubular shaped flower so that the hummingbirds can stick their beak in there and suck out the nectar. So this needs to go into the ground because I'm gonna put this on the side garden that's where the hummingbird feeder is so they can they can choose. I'm gonna make my list real quick before I start anything. This is all of the rainwater that I collected in one night. Let's put this water into my rain barrel, which has a good amount of water in it. There's bugs and stuff like that in it, but that's expected. I'm going to take some rainwater. Squash needs some more. Oh look, my basil already germinated. That's cool. Go ahead and water that. Water all these squash. Oh hey! Hey! Are you gonna join me today? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, I noticed that my Swiss chard has been picked at. Something is eating it and my guess is that it's slugs. So what are we going to do? No, we're not going to get drunk and watch the slugs eat the Swiss chard. <laughs> we're going to put the beer inside these little traps that I set up. This is how I handle my slug problem. Thankfully, I don't have a, too much of a problem where the slugs just mow down everything. But every once in a while, I do have an issue. The slugs are attracted to the smell of the beer, and so they'll crawl and they'll be like, oh, what's this over here? Boop, and they'll just drown. So it's like the most organic way that I can um, get rid of my slugs. Okay, so these are the two strawberries that I'm gonna be planting, and I'll show you the varieties. This one is a perennial, and it's called the Sequoia June Bearing Strawberry. This one, which is called seascape strawberry. It's an ever bearing, so it has continual crop. Like fertilizer. This is like a pellet fertilizer. And then I'll also add some worm castings to the hole.
Okay, so the next thing I need to do is plant strawberries in this container. So what I'm gonna have to do is pretty much take as much of this dirt off as I can so I can put it through here and then fill it back up with, with soil. And I'll probably put like one plant here, but I need to put, there's already one here that survived from last year. I'll put one, two, three, four, five. And then the one on top, whoa. All right, the hawks are, they're up to something. Don't know what. Anyways, I'll just go ahead and get started with this. Again, this is the seascape variety. These already have flowers. So it has a nice root system, but I can't fit that in there. So what I need to do is take off some of this dirt without disrupting the roots. I'm just going to put a plant on top to finish this off. And backfill it. There are the dogs. Relaxing, sunbathing. Curly. Say hi, Curly. <laughs> He says hi. All right, so all I'm going to do is just dig up some compost and in the clumps of compost, there's usually a bunch of worms. So I'll take a clump, clump of compost out, put it in a bucket and then transfer it over to the worm bin. collect some more casties before I put the new worms in their home. Oh, I accidentally got a worm, so I'll put him back. Let's kind of put the worm here, put the compost here. take some of these sticks and stuff out. Not all of them, just a few. And then just dump the worms in. Back to another clip today it's nice and sunny it's bright it's gonna be clear enough for me to do some things outside yesterday it was raining and I collected lots more rainwater and I have a long list of things I need to do I need to plant out the um, plants I got from Armstrong which is a tomato plant and a melon sage that's gonna be going on the side garden I need to sow more tomatoes because March 29th is my goal to get all of my tomatoes sown. Obviously I can do more past that, but I have, let's see, March, April, May, June, July. I have around four and a half months to get my things, not everything, but the things that I want to enter into my local county fair. I have around 
four months for them to mature and be ready to pick. So I am doing things, starting things earlier than I normally would. Uh, Curly's over there in the back. Hey Curly. Um, I need to actually start setting up some trellises, uh, bamboo trellises, and I'll show you guys how I do that. If I don't get to that in this vlog, I'll definitely be doing that in the next vlog, and I'll show you guys how much rain I collected. All right, so I collected another full bucket of rainwater. Some things. First thing I'm going to be sewing is this gourd, a birdhouse gourd, and I've never grown gourds before. Wow, I've never seen a seed look like that. This, oh no, oh, all right, we just lost one there in the, that's interesting. Three per station. All this rain and warm weather I've been getting is really helping the things out in the greenhouse. The tomatoes are starting to germinate, squash is starting to germinate and sprout, which is really cool. So next, I'm going to be planting these California black eye cow peas. So these are considered peas and not beans, but they really do grow like beans so um, I like beans like this that can vine up so I can use vertical space instead of a bush bean where I need more square footage which I don't have here so I prefer growing um, any kind of viney or pole bean rather than bush beans that's a cool seed so I'm gonna do four per station. Actually, I'm going to do five. Kind of bury them a little deep. Okay, so next I'm going to be planting the uh, Brandywine tomato, and these have germinated quite well for me. I just want more plants. Um, some of them I did get rid of, and others I uh, potted on, and they're doing really well. I'm going to do four per station. Next tomato I'm going to be sowing is this Cherokee Purple. This is an heirloom variety. It's supposed to taste delicious. And this is all the seed I have left. I'm going to sow all of these. Some of these are sticking together. I'm gonna do five. So I'm gonna be planting this tomato and I'll show you guys how deep um, I plant it and what I'm gonna be putting in the hole. So I'm gonna be using these organic nitrogen pellets. These are compressed, you can find these at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, your local hardware store. My own worm castings into the hole because tomatoes are very, very heavy feeders. So first, I'm going to dig a hole really as deep as I can. I can feel the shovel hitting the bottom. Oh, there's worms in here. It's a great sign. Put two handfuls of casting. And then now I'm going to take my tomato 
pop it out. And this, as you can tell, that is ready to go. Just gonna loosen the roots just a little bit. It doesn't need that much. And it looks like I have two plants in here. I'm just gonna plant it together like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plant this very, a little deeper like that. Grab some soil. Alright you guys, so I'm in the butterfly and bee garden and I'm going to be planting my beautiful melon sage. I'm going to put it over there in that corner. I'm going to add my fertilizer. and worm castings. I'm going to be harvesting some beets from this bed that I know are ready. Um, I know this one is ready over here. It's pretty big. There's one in here that is really ready. It's quite big. There it is. Oh, look at the worm on the bottom. Did you guys see that? And look at, there's like little, I don't even know what that is. A beet? A baby beet? Don't know. It's a beautiful color. This is probably some of the best beets I've grown. Hello everybody and welcome to another clip in this garden vlog. I'm currently in my kitchen and that's because today it's cold and I was planning on sowing seeds and I just don't think that even my greenhouse will be warm enough for the seeds to germinate so I'm gonna wait a day or two for it to warm up. Yesterday in the clip I showed you guys that I picked some beets and I'm gonna show you a recipe if you want to roast your beets. It's fairly simple. All you have to do is, um, I have my beets right here, they're washed. So then what you're gonna need is just some salt. This is sea salt. You're gonna need some pepper, um, some olive oil, I'm using extra virgin. And then I'm gonna go out to the garden and pick some thyme, cause Okay, so I'm back in the kitchen and I've got my thyme. I'm just using a cookie sheet tray and I'm putting it in foil um, just so it's easier to clean up. All I have to do when the beets are done cooking is just throw this away. So I have my beets here and what you want to do is get your olive oil and 
Just generously coat your beets. Should be good enough. And then take your salt and season generously. Pepper. Um, try to use fresh ground pepper if you have it. Get some of these essential oils and the thyme going. And just break it apart. I'm just going to use this apple cider vinegar because this is what I have. But if you have champagne vinegar, that's what the, uh, the original recipe uses, champagne vinegar. But this is what I have, apple cider vinegar. But before I put this, I'm just going to massage the beets and the seasoning and the thyme. Just going to just a little, just the smallest amount. I'm gonna make a little house with this, so bring this up. This is a old patty pan squash that I left to go hollow. Usually there is seeds. I do this with my squash. If I'm um, not going to eat it, I just let it go hollow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut. If you can hear that, let's do this. So as you can see, the flesh is pretty much dried up and all that is left is seeds. And these seeds are already dried, ready to go. And I'm going to compost these parts here. This is great for compost. So now I have some patty pan squash. And this was my largest patty pan completely, but I'm just going to show you guys how you use an old towel. Don't use a brand new towel, use an old towel. And just very carefully, I take the beet by this little rat tail. And while you need to do this while they're warm or else the skin's not going to come off. So all you do is you just take that skin off and you can tell it's not completely coming off because they're not all the way done but it's like you kind of scratch at the skin a little bit and the skin comes right off Ooh, that's hot <laughs> and I just take that little rat tail off because you can see that even any excess dirt or anything like that is gonna come off so you just keep peeling it back with your towel, do it to the whole beet. There are the finished roasted beets. I'm really happy with how these turned out. They have a nice pretty red color on the outside. I think this variety is the Chio Chioga beet. And yeah, go ahead and try that recipe out. And if you try it out, let me know how it works for you. Mm -hmm.